everybody! I apologize for the really long unexpected break. My homework and school life got so crazy that I just needed to step back and focus on my school life because studies are very important. Kids, remember that. Studies first. Also, new room! We did a lot of redecorating at the school and I upgraded. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So anyway, to get back into the swing of things, I'm going to share with you a short story which I wrote for a contest a while back. It was well liked. Okay, it won. <laughs> I am a bit proud of that. To be recognized for something that you enjoy doing is satisfying to say the least. So without further ado, I present <coughs> Looking Back. The teapot whistles, echoing through the house. It shatters the desolate silence that pervades the space like an empty, haunted hollow. There's a shuffle and a creak. Someone steadily walks toward the kitchen to put an end to the cacophony. The shrillness fades. Just one more sound which life is made of. As the old gentleman lifted the pot to pour out the strength-giving brew, he beheld a flash of light, searing red, lasting an instant and forever. Suddenly he was a young man again, pouring out the tea for his sweetheart. So startled by the incredible change was he that the teapot nearly slipped from his hands. Those hands once again so strong, which had grown so old. There he was, pre-war soldier to be, telling his beloved of the drive to serve, to be a little part of something grand. Had he been transported through the ticking clock of laughter and song, or was this only an old memory revisiting him now that he was old and forgotten? had no way of knowing, so he continued through the memory, waiting for its time to be played out. He slowly turned, cradling the delicate teacup, his favorite, sprayed with rosebuds, and there was this girl, as lovely as a break in the clouds during a storm. Brown hair, red dress. She looked like sunlight, a lonely beam of sunlight, ice cold and still on a winter day, devastated and devastating to behold. I wish this war would end. Her voice smashed through him like the bullets that he would receive. How he had missed that voice, the voice that was so, so quiet, and yet could make his heart stand still, could make his world spin round. He sat beside her on the little sofa and took her cold hand in his, a strong hand, a hand still warm with youth. They sat there, young hand and young hand, both wishing for the same thing. The old man opened his eyes. He looked down and saw the scars across his weathered hands. How they had changed since that day. He placed the mug on the table. He covered his eyes with those hands. Oh, what those eyes had seen since that day. There were screams and gunfire. His hands slowly pulled away, and before him lay the battlefield, crimson and terrible. Men running this way, running that way, the look of horror on their faces as they were shot. He was in a forest, dodging trees and bullets, wood and lead. He ran out into a clearing, his base camp. As he stumbled through the jumble of tents and men, his bleary eyes not fully aware of the difference between the two, someone shouted, loud and clear, shattering the frozen air, yet a whisper amongst the clamor of war and blood. He's been shot. As he sat nursing the turmoil in his mind, his hands pressed against the tide of flowing crimson, those hands once so strong. He lifted his heavy head to see a pretty young nurse coming toward him. Her sweet voice reached his ears. It was his pretty young nurse, but it was never to be. The man saw himself lying in a cot, too wounded to rise as the enemy ravaged the camp and destroyed everything in sight. He saw his beloved still running to him as she was shot down and contributed yet more red to the crimson battle. Frantically, he rolled out of his cot and dragged himself across the clearing to her side. And there was his girl, as lovely as a break of the clouds during a storm. Brown hair, red dress sunlight, ice cold and still on a winter day, devastated and devastating to behold. She was dead. Gently, gently he raised her in his arms and held her close to his beating heart. As desolate
desolation slipped in with the creeping dark, he waited for death to come to him, but it never did. He was rescued and fed and separated from his love as she descended into the grave. He lived his lonely life, waiting until the day he could see her once again. Looking back, he would have changed so much he had known sadness and had called him faithful companion, it had surely been a good life. He had known happiness. In fact, the old man had lived, if only because he had loved a cold ray of sunshine. As he sat on the worn sofa, he smiled, and that smile broadened into laughter. So that was my story. Yeah, a bit dismal, yes, but I am proud of it. I love writing sad things. It releases negative energy, among other things. But I mean, life's not all good things, you know? But life, life is a good thing, despite all the bad in it. That's an idea that I want to keep alive and writing it down feels like the first step for me. It's so good to be back. <laughs>